Every warship, whether on the surface or beneath the waves, trembles at the sight of this helicopter. From above, it instills fear into the hearts of enemy sea monsters. Born from the minds of experts at Sikorsky Aircraft Corporation, the creators of the legendary Black Hawk and serving in the world's most powerful navy today. Allow me to introduce to you the world's premier multi-mission submarine hunting helicopter, the Seahawk MH-60R. A like and subscription from you would be a tremendous support for military intelligence. In the future, we will continue to introduce new products with increasingly refined quality, covering not only defense brands, but also any facts or secrets about all military vehicles, tactical history, and military strategies worldwide. So please hit like and subscribe to not miss any video. Now, let's get back to the main content. In the 1970s, the US Navy began searching for a new helicopter to replace the common SH-2 Sea Sprite. This compact and agile combat helicopter was commonly used for multi-purpose and anti-submarine warfare. It also served as the platform for deploying the versatile light airborne multi-purpose electronic system, LAMPS Mark I, for naval combat and search and rescue capabilities. However, advancements in sensor technology and airborne electronics led to the birth of the LAMPS Mark II system. And by 1974, the US Navy organized a competition to develop ideas for the integrated LAMPS Mark III system for both aircraft and ships. As a result, IBM Federal Systems was chosen as the primary developer for this system. However, since the Kamen SH-2 Sea Spritter was not large enough to carry the necessary equipment, the Navy requested a new helicopter. In the mid-1970s, they began evaluating several helicopter models, such as the Sikorsky YUH-60, Boeing Vertol YUH-61, as well as proposals from Bell, Kamen Aerospace, Leonardo Helicopters, and MBB. Based on the requirements for the new Navy helicopter to be based on the Army's UH-60 Black Hawk, the US Navy ultimately chose Sikorsky's S-70B design and renamed it the SH-60B Seahawk. This aircraft shared up to 83% commonality with the UH-60A, with key changes including corrosion resistance, more powerful T-700 GE-401C engines, main landing gear with hydraulic shock absorbers, and two additional weapon pylons. Moreover, the SH-60B Seahawk was equipped with larger fuel tanks, an electrically folding tail rotor, and a horizontal stabilizer, a pneumatic-powered anti-submarine missile system with a total of 25 tubes. On March 11, 1983, the SH-60B made its first flight and entered service in 1984, with its first deployment occurring a year later. Deployable on any destroyer, frigate, fast combat support ship, amphibious assault ship or aircraft carrier. The SH-60B is used to carry out missions, including anti-submarine warfare, surface warfare, naval special warfare, search and rescue, logistics transport, and medical evacuation. To fulfill these operations, Sikorsky engineers equipped the SH-60 with a sophisticated sensor system, including a magnetic anomaly detector, MAED, an airborne dipping sonar, Alongside these are other equipment such as the APS-124 search radar, the ALQ-142 ESM electronic countermeasure system, and optional forward-looking infrared turret, FLIR, mounted on the nose. Not only that, but the weaponry system of the SH-60B is also quite extensive, with options ranging from 7.62mm guns mounted on the cabin door or GAU-16 50 caliber machine guns to lightweight torpedoes MK-46, MK-50 or MK-54 and AGM-114 Hellfire missiles. After the SH-60B Seahawk entered service, the US Navy continued to organize competitions to find a capable replacement for the SH-3 seeking submarine helicopter. Eventually, a variant of the SH-60B called the SH-60F was developed by Sikorsky starting in March 1985. It outperformed competitors from Kaman, earning the favor of Navibras. By January 1986, seven SH-60F helicopters had been ordered and manufactured, with the first deployment occurring on March 19, 1987. The SH-60F 
primarily served as the primary anti-submarine warfare aircraft for carrier strike group operations. It was equipped with an AQS-13F dipping sonar system and carried six pneumatic anti-submarine warfare torpedoes, as well as attacking weapons such as the MK-46, MK-50 or MK-54 torpedoes and a defensive 12.7 Neumann machine gun. By 1993, Sikorsky teamed up with Lockheed Martin to develop an upgraded light multipurpose airborne electronic system, LAMPS Mark III Block II, designated as the MH-60R Seahawk, nicknamed Romeo. Six years later, two SH-60B helicopters were converted into MH-60R, combining features from both the SH-60B and SH-60F. Its maiden flight took place on December 22, 1999. Starting from December 2005, a replacement squadron and helicopter anti-submarine warfare squadron 41 received MH-60R helicopters and began training their first group of pilots. Three years later, the first batch of 11 combat-ready MH-60Rs was delivered to helicopter anti-submarine warfare squadron 71, one of the squadrons operating on the USS Ronald Reagan aircraft carrier with the main mission of anti-surface and anti-submarine warfare. Additionally, according to Lockheed Martin, this helicopter's secondary missions include search and rescue, logistics support, surface fire support, personnel transport, medical evacuation, communication, and data transfer. Furthermore, from 2006 to 2015, SH-60B helicopters in light anti-submarine warfare squadrons gradually completed the transition to MH-60R. Meanwhile, in 2012, MH-60Rs were also handed over to Helicopter Anti-Submarine Warfare Squadron 51, one of the forward deployed units of the US Navy based in Japan. As of January 23, 2013, Sikorsky had delivered 166 Malakarcha 60Rs to the military and was expected to continue production until 2017 with a total of 291 helicopters. Additionally, the MH-60R will serve the Navy until the 2030s, not only part of the US military arsenal, the Romeo Seahawk has also gained trust from many other navies around the world. In June 2011, the Australian Minister of Defence announced that the two nations had chosen the MH-60R to replace the S-70B2 helicopter, with a specific order of 24 mastered 60Rs equipped with Mark 50 torpedoes and Hellfire anti-ship missiles. Delivery began in 2013 and was completed by 2016. Since 2022, the Royal Australian Navy has ordered an additional 12 helicopters to replace the MRH-90 fleet, demonstrating absolute satisfaction with the world's most powerful anti-submarine helicopter. Besides Australia, the United States has also succeeded in bidding and selling MH-60Rs to Denmark, Spain, Qatar, Saudi Arabia and Indonesia. Additionally, Norway and Malaysia are also considering acquiring these helicopters. Next, let's explore why the MH-60R Seahawk, dubbed the world's most powerful anti-submarine helicopter, is no mere boast, as well as why many naval forces are eager to acquire it. The first reason undoubtedly lies in its extensive weapons system, with the most powerful being the AGM-119B Penguin anti-ship missiles. Penguin is a product of the Kongsberg Weapons Factory, now part of General Dynamics European Systems, Penguin is a compact and lightweight anti-ship missile designed to be launched from helicopters and small missile boats. It is also the first NATO anti-ship missile equipped with an infrared guidance system. Usually, most anti-ship missiles like Harpoon or Exocet are designed to attack surface targets from the farthest possible distance over the open ocean. However, this was found to pose some issues when used in the confined waters of coastal regions. Specifically, large heavy missiles with aerodynamically optimized flight paths tend to perform poorly in these areas. Additionally, the terrain there interferes with radar operations and rarely provides opportunities for missiles to attack ships from long distances in any condition. Due to such shortcomings, the race to develop a new type of missile began. The process of making the Penguin missile began in 1962 as a joint program between the Norwegian Defence Research Agency and the Kongsberg Weapons Factory, with additional funding from the West German government. This idea attracted considerable interest not only from the Norwegian Navy,
but also from the US Navy. Consequently, the project received additional funding from both Oslo and Washington. However, the development effort was a lengthy process, and it was not until 10 years later that the original Penguin MK1 model was put into use by the Royal Norwegian Navy and the Turkish Navy. In 1980, the more advanced Penguin MK2 was introduced and incorporated into the Norwegian Armed Forces. Later on, Norwegian engineers continued their efforts to create a more suitable missile for fixed-wing aircraft called the Penguin MK3, which was adopted by the Royal Norwegian Air Force in 1987. Also in the 1980s, the US Air Force tested the Penguin MK3 under the designation AGM-119 Penguin. Although its performance was considered satisfactory, the Air Force and other units within the US Armed Forces decided not to purchase it, and therefore the AGM-119A was never put into mass production. While the US Air Force completely abandoned the program, in the 1990s, the US Navy became interested in the MK-217 Penguin missile for use on its helicopters. This was because the AGM-84 Harpoon missile was considered too cumbersome. Around 1993-1994, the MK-217 was officially put into use in the US Navy under the simplified name AGM-1919B Penguin. The Penguin missile stands out among all other anti-ship missiles, characterized by its fins with a steep slope where the smaller front fins are positioned near the missile's nose, while the significantly larger rear fins are located in the middle of the missile body rather than at the back. Moreover, the rear fins can fold to fit the missile for launch and then lock into position upon deployment. Additionally, there are two lifting lugs on the body that allow the penguin to be mounted on underwing or undercarriage racks. The seeker head is covered with a green-tinted glass dome. Typically, this missile model is painted white or grey, but the colour scheme may vary depending on the military using it. As mentioned, the AGM-119B Penguin is equipped on the MH-60R Seahawk anti-submarine helicopter, essentially the MK-27 version of the Penguin missile. It measures 3 metres in length, 0 0.2 or 8 metres in diameter, weighs 345 kilograms, and carries a 113 kilogram high explosive fragmentation warhead. The most unique feature of the AGM 1-19B version and the Penguin missile series in general is its guidance capability. Instead of being radar guided like most other anti-ship missiles, the Penguin has an infrared seeker head. Because this guidance method is entirely passive, it doesn't give away the attack before launch and there's no radar signal to alert the enemy that an attack is underway, rendering radar warning receivers useless. A ship will only detect an infrared-guided missile approaching with its own radar. This poses a significant challenge for a missile that can fly low near the sea surface, compact and agile like the Penguin. They might not even realize they're under attack until the missile hits. Moreover, even if the enemy detects the attack, they can't easily intercept the Penguin. Despite conventional electronic countermeasures on modern warships designed to defeat radar-guided missiles, they won't be effective against this type of missile. However, the infrared guidance system is not a perfect solution. Some warships are equipped with decoy flares capable of deceiving the Penguin. Additionally, infrared sensors are known to have issues operating in fog or rain as such weather conditions can help camouflage and conceal the target from the missile seeker. Nevertheless, design engineers have anticipated this and equipped the missile with electronic counter-counter measures to minimize the impact of decoys on the missile. Furthermore, while most modern anti-ship missiles are equipped with jet engines to exploit the advantages of durability and performance they offer, the Penguin is equipped with a solid fuel engine without the need for external boosters. Consequently, the missile can accelerate to maximum speed in seconds and take only about one minute to reach its maximum range of 26.9 kilometers. Accompanying the AGM-1119B Penguin in the mission to eliminate surface targets of the MH-60 Seahawk are the AGM-114 Hellfire missiles. This is a type of air-to-surface guided missile produced by the United States 
and is one of the most common and important Western helicopter weapons. Development of this missile began in 1974 and completed testing seven years later, gradually being upgraded over time. Today, it has become a precision multi-role, multi-target attack weapon that can be deployed from air, sea and land. It has a penetration capability of 800 millimeters of armor and a range of up to nine kilometers. The AGM-114 Hellfire is equipped with a solid fuel propulsion system, allowing it to reach speeds of Mach 1.3. Depending on the variant, the Hellfire weighs between 45 and 49 kilos, with lengths ranging from 1.6 to 1.8 meters and carrying a warhead weighing approximately 8 to 9 kilos. However, except for the AGM-114L Longbow Hellfire variant, which uses radar guidance and is equipped on the US AH-64D Longbow Apache helicopter, they all share a common feature, the use of a semi-active laser guidance system. After being launched, the missile heads straight to the position designated by the laser designator mounted on the launching aircraft, allied aircraft, ground combat vehicles, or handheld devices. As a result, the aircraft pilot only needs to aim the missile in the right direction and press the button. For helicopters like the MH6 Seahawk, this feature allows them to maintain stealth behind terrain features without revealing their position and risking detection and attack by enemy forces. Additionally, another outstanding feature of the Hellfire, not present in other similar missiles, is its ability to simultaneously launch multiple missiles at separate targets, significantly increasing the chances of target destruction. However, that's not the greatest advantage of the Hellfire. Instead, it's the ability to engage multiple different targets simultaneously. Specifically, the launching aircraft can deploy multiple missiles at once, targeting a group of closely located targets. Then, each target is designated for individual missile engagement. For example, if an MH6 Seahawk helicopter is tasked with attacking a group of three enemy ships, it can launch three Hellfire missiles seconds apart. Then, the laser spot is moved to each target for the missile to engage them one by one. Furthermore, except for the M and N variants, all Hellfire missile models have direction-oriented warheads with undisclosed armor penetration levels. Later models are equipped with dual-direction-oriented warheads, significantly improving armor penetration capability and counteracting reactive armor. Meanwhile, the AGM-114M uses a fragmentation warhead with additional incendiary effects, designed to combat soft targets such as infantry, light vehicles, boats, civilian structures, and aircraft parked on the ground. This warhead is also effective against light-armored vehicles, but will not affect heavily armored main battle tanks. Compared to the AGM-114M, the N variant is seen as a significant advancement with its tandem high-explosive warhead. It uses oxidized metal compounds, possibly zinc or aluminum powder, as explosives. Thanks to this design, the heat and pressure from the explosion are significant, making the AGM Hanan 114L particularly effective for destroying structures and area targets. In addition to possessing the world's most potent anti-surface weapons, the Sea Wolves of the US Navy naturally also have the MK-54 lightweight torpedoes. This advanced torpedo was designed and developed by Raytheon in collaboration with the US Navy. It is designed to be launched from surface ships, fixed-wing aircraft and helicopters, and can operate in both littoral and deep water environments, allowing the torpedo to hit targets at any depth. The torpedo measures 2.71 meters in length, 32.3 simonanes in diameter, weighs 275.7 kN, carries a 43.9 kilo warhead, and is equipped with an external liquid fuel propulsion system, allowing it to travel at a cruising speed of 74.1 kHz h. The MK-54 also incorporates hardware and software features from previous generation torpedoes such as the MK-46, MK-50 and MK-48, combined with existing modern technologies to improve its ability to counter enemy countermeasures during attacks in shallow waters. Additionally, the MK-54 Torpedo is equipped with processing algorithms to detect decoys or countermeasures. It then hunts down identified threats. 
Along with that, it features a guidance system to accurately measure three-dimensional motion and acceleration, as well as an active or passive sonar guidance system to enhance its guidance capabilities. Along with the mentioned missiles and torpedoes, the MH-60R Seahawk also features primarily 7.62mm or 12.7mm machine guns for aircraft defence duties. Furthermore, its aircraft design and electronic systems play a crucial role in making it the world's most potent anti-submarine helicopter. The MH-60R Seahawk is powered by two shaft turboshaft engines with 1900 horsepower each, similar to the SH-60B engines, enabling it to reach a maximum speed of 267 kilometers h. Its combat radius is 93 km, service ceiling is 3.4 km, and its operational time is 3 hours and 30 minutes. Additionally, like all other H-60 series helicopters in the US Navy, the MH-60R has a rescue hoist function for vital transport missions. It can be equipped with a cargo hook with a load capacity of 2.7 tons. To operate this aircraft, the flight crew uses dual controls, a common programmable keyboard, large storage capacity memory, management computer, and specialized software. All necessary information is displayed on four multifunctional color screens that can be read in all lighting conditions, while also compatible with night vision goggles. Moreover, the MH-60R is equipped with numerous electronic systems, including a navigation system with global positioning and inertial navigation, a digital communication system with satellite communication radios and data links, missile approach warning system, integrated electro-optical sensor suite with infrared cameras and laser rangefinders, decoy dispensing system, and devices such as infrared jammers, electronic countermeasure systems, radar signal detectors, multi-mode friend or foe identification, low frequency sonar deployed from the air, and magnetic anomaly detectors are also included. With these modern and advanced systems, the flight crew can easily control the aircraft, detect enemy vessels both above and below the water, and accurately launch missiles and torpedoes to engage them. So, we've come to the end of our journey, exploring the capabilities of the US Navy's MH-60 Seahawk. Viewers now have an overview of its anti-submarine power, whether it's truly the world's most potent compared to Russia's K-27, or China's Z-1-8F, and whether it's capable enough to deal with modern submarines from the White Fang land, like Bore, Yasen, Akula, or Sierra 2. Don't hesitate to leave your thoughts in the comments below. Now it's time for us to say goodbye and see you in the next videos. Wishing everyone a warm day with family.